the early morning hours of April 29th, 2004, Melanie McGuire said that she and her husband, Bill, had a violent fight and that he left and she never saw him again. Melanie says the next day she got her kids up, she took them to daycare, and she started trying to figure out how she was going to move on with her life without Bill. And during this, the next day, the day after that, the day after that, you didn't hear anything from him. No. Did you try calling him directly? No, because this is what used to happen when we fought. You know, I'd call whether it was to tell him off or to try to apologize or what. We just end up getting back into it again. I'm done now. I'm done. She retains a divorce attorney, and at this point, she does tell the divorce attorney that she has not seen her husband in a few days. And according to Melanie, the attorney advised her not to file a missing persons report. My heart broke for her. She didn't deserve, nobody deserved that. But I told her that, you know, she needed to think about herself right now. She needs to protect herself. I called a business associate of mine who was an attorney. She said, you need to get a restraining order. State your full name. Melanie Lynn McGuire. She had to go in front of a judge and give sworn statement about the incident that happened. Tell me what uh, happened that brought you to court today for a temporary restraining order. Um, my husband and I closed on our first house on Wednesday. Um, that should be a positive thing, shouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it should. Um, he's been behaving really erratically. Ms. McGuire, you're safe here. Don't worry. Melanie explained to the judge how Bill had been violent with her. Did he hit you, ma'am? Um, not, not until, well, I don't mean to sound like I had absolutely no part in this. I said some not nice things and slapped me. As part of the questions, Melanie was asked by the judge if she owned any firearms. Do you know if there's any uh, weapons? Not to my knowledge. This is a sketch of the body that washed ashore near the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel this month. We're hoping maybe this will give us a an edge and maybe identify him sooner. About a month goes by between the time that Bill disappears and when Sue Rice identifies Bill McGuire after seeing the sketch on local TV. The next thing police have to do is notify Melanie McGuire of the death of her husband. Melanie was asked to come down to the police station. The officer came out and he says, is your husband William McGuire? And I said, yes. And he said, I'm sorry to tell you, ma'am that William is deceased. And I just, I just burst into tears. But there's one thing she never asked. How was Bill McGuire murdered? They did not tell her how and the condition in which he was found. That would be one of the first questions that I would ask. The next step was that the Virginia police wanted to speak with Melanie. Melanie agrees, but she brings her divorce attorney with her and another criminal attorney in that practice. Conducting an interview with the victim's wife with two attorneys present is highly unusual. First time I have ever had that happen to me. She was nervous. She was visibly shaking. She made expressions like she was crying, but uh, she never had a tear in her eye. I asked her if she had any luggage, and she informed us that they didn't have any matching luggage. The next day, Melanie told detectives she suddenly remembered that the McGuire's did own a matching set of designer luggage. I showed her a picture of one of the pieces of luggage that we recovered in the bay, and she identified that as belonging to them. They asked what kind of person Bill was, and she said he was the kind of person that had an act for pissing people off. She asked us, where did we find her husband's vehicle at? I told her at that point, we hadn't found her husband's vehicle. And she said that probably a good place to look would be Atlantic City, New Jersey. She also informed us that her husband had a, a gambling problem. Did he get involved with the wrong people? That's what I would have to believe, that he had gotten himself into something. And Bill always thought he could handle everything. He was always into some kind of deal. So I, I think maybe this deal was his last deal. After the interview was done that evening, uh, we also conducted a search at their old 
apartment building. The apartment was empty. She had already moved out. They asked him about Bill's possessions and his clothes. We discovered that Miss McGuire had already given all of her husband's belongings away. Virginia Beach detectives find out that Melanie McGuire had given most of Bill's belongings away to a friend's cousin, and they wanted to track that man down. Eventually, they did and found out that most of Bill's clothing was still in black trash bags, much like the bags that contained Bill McGuire's body parts. The garbage bag, by sight, looked identical. Things are starting to make sense with the detectives. There's black trash bags. And there was also the hospital blanket that the head was wrapped into. And they're thinking, well, Melanie McGuire is a nurse. That's kind of a, an odd coincidence. At Melanie's suggestion, detectives start to search Atlantic City for Bill's car. And lo and behold, that's exactly where they find it. The Atlantic City forensic unit processed Mr. McGuire's vehicle. They took photos, they fingerprinted, they vacuum cleaned the floorboards. The body was released to Melanie on a Tuesday. Immediately, she had him cremated. And the funeral lasted all of 10, 15 minutes at the most. She called the following evening after the funeral. And at that point, I just kind of blasted her. I just told her, I said, Melanie, Bill deserves so much more. And Mel just said, well, I'm a single mom now, and now I've, I've just got to get on with my life. I said, well, no, the next thing is we've got to figure out who did this to him. And after I got off the phone, I remember hanging it up, and I said, John, she did it. She did it. Everything pointed to Melanie McGuire. Through wiretapping her phone, the police discovered the relationship that she was having with Dr. Miller. It's a eureka moment because it provides motive. I've told him everything that I know. But they're, you know, they just don't. They, they want you to break. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.